Hello and welcome to the Thursday, November 30th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the questions I get a lot is, if you're setting up a honeypot, what should you expect? How many attacks should you expect? What kinds of attacks you should, should you expect? Well, uh, one of our sans.edu undergraduate interns has put together a little blog post, a little diary on the Internet Storm Center answering just that question. The data summarized covers about three months, and I would call it pretty typical. There are attacks against the SH honeypot from about 26,000 IP addresses and 13,000 different usernames were attempted with 43,000 passwords. So quite impressive numbers for a little lonely honeypot just exposing SSH. Also, the commands that the attackers are attempting are summarized 27,000 different commands were captured. So this is only after the initial login attempt was successful. The top 10 that uh, are listed here are very typical again, so some reconnaissance, some overriding of SH keys. That's actually super common and I think uh, often not well monitored. And that's exactly sort of how you learn from honeypots. If you're seeing that one of the things that attackers seem to always do is modify your authorized uh, keys file. Well, uh, that's probably something that you need to put some additional controls and uh, monitoring around. So take a look, and if you're interested in running your own honeypot, uh, well, uh, please uh, go ahead and let me know how it goes. And Tenable today published an advisory with details regarding three vulnerabilities in ArcSurf UDP. The backup suite is vulnerable to these three trivial to exploit vulnerabilities. Tenable does provide the sample curl commands essentially that will show you how to exploit these vulnerabilities. Patches were released last week, so fairly short timeline here in particular, given how trivial these vulnerabilities are to exploit. But these are prominent systems that you should have exposed to the internet in the first place. In particular, the first of the vulnerabilities, that CVE 2023-41998, it's an unauthenticated remote code execution. Essentially, the vulnerability here is that the attacker can trigger an API endpoint that will download and execute a patch, but there is apparently absolutely no validation as to where the patch is coming from or what the zip file that's being uploaded here actually contains. So that's how the trivial remote code execution works. By default, the vulnerable service is listening on port 8014. At this point, I don't see a notable increase in scans for port 8014. Uh, set up some of our honeypots to start listening on the port, so we'll see if there are any incoming scans trying to exploit this vulnerability. I have to admit this vulnerability I may really only be including here a little bit for sentimental value because one of the sort of early DVR network video recorder vulnerabilities I looked at was in a Hikvision product and looks like they're still going strong when it comes to finding new vulnerabilities to include in their products. CVE 2023-48121 is, as they're saying, an authentication bypass vulnerability in the HIC Connect module. It only states that it allows attackers to consume services, but authentication bypass, of course, could also be more behind it. Not really clear based on the very brief vulnerability notice published by HikVision. Then we have an interesting paper by researchers from Northwestern University that looks at prompt injection attacks at 200 plus custom GPTs. You're all probably familiar with ChatGPT, but the basic software behind ChatGPT can be used to create your own GPT, so to speak, and uh, there are some common pitfalls that you have to be aware of. And I think that's the real value of the paper to really show how some of these systems are 
revealing more data than they're supposed to. So pretty good paper if you are attempting to set up your own GPT model. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And thanks to everybody who is sending me links and interesting stories that I may have missed. Uh, always good to know what's out there and what's interesting to you. Also, let me know if there are any stories that I should or should not have included. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.